So on a Sunday before MLK Day, and on a Sunday where there were huge NFL playoff games taking place, this debate happened. And for the 10 people that actually got to watch the debate, what they received was a substantive debate filled with lots of clash and an actual discussion of the real issues facing the American people. Now, keep in mind here before you listen to my take on this debate, I'm a die-hard Bernie Sanders supporter. But watching this debate, I really did try to view it through an unbiased lens, basically through the eyes of the average Democratic Party voter. And even viewing this debate from that perspective, I still think that Bernie Sanders utterly dominated this debate. He wiped the floor with Hillary Clinton on economic issues. She tried to challenge him on single parent health care. Mm -mm. Just, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> it was let's make health care more affordable versus let's make health care free and a right for every man, woman, and child. There's no debate on that, okay? She said, I don't want to start up a new health care fight. Let's just build on Obamacare and just see where we go. <laughs> and Bernie's response to that was so authentic, so truthful. Anybody who saw it, his response definitely resonated. And it was that it's time to stand up to these huge pharmaceutical companies. It's time to stand up to these huge insurance companies. They have bought off our politicians, including you, Hillary Clinton. And that's the only thing standing in the way of guaranteeing health care to all people. That's undeniable. That's authentic. It's cold, hard truth. And that's why I think he resonated in this debate. Uh, Hillary Clinton and even the moderators, they kept trying to oversimplify the health care debate by simply saying, oh, he wants to raise taxes on the middle class. But what they failed to realize, and Bernie Sanders over and over again kept trying to point this out, his plan overall would save average American families thousands of dollars per year because you're doing away with private health care insurance. So yes, there's going to be a small 2.2% tax to pay for it, but the net result would be thousands of dollars in savings for working class and middle class families. So overall on that health care issue, Bernie Sanders vaporized Hillary Clinton. Then on Wall Street, even though I believe Bernie Sanders definitely won on that issue, I thought the debate on that issue was definitely lacking substance. But what I remember, there wasn't much discussion on what the, each individual plan would actually do to take on Wall Street. Most of the Wall Street debate was really just, oh, just pointing fingers. Oh, Bernie Sanders, you made this one bad vote, and which my husband signed into law. What? <laughs> and then Bernie Sanders kept trying to hit her about those $600,000 speeches for Goldman Sachs and, of course, her top donors over her career being huge banks. And of course, you need to point that out, right? Because it's a huge, glaring blemish on her record. But what I would have liked to see uh, is more of a substantive uh, discussion about their Wall Street plans. Bernie Sanders has the better plan. He unveiled that in an epic speech a couple weeks back. So I actually talk a little bit more about that instead of just hitting her on her record. But even on Wall Street, Bernie Sanders still dominated that debate. Um, and then on economic issues, what really made it such a convincing win for Bernie Sanders was that he kept bringing up campaign finance reform and the audience ate it up. And of course, the vast majority of voters are going to eat it up, Democrat or Republican. Should we take back our democracy from the ultra rich and huge corporations? Of course, right? This is our democracy. We the people. And he, what he kept doing is linking all of these issues, whether it's Wall Street, health care, all of these issues linking them to money in politics. It's common sense. We shouldn't allow banks to regularly destroy our economy. It's common sense that healthcare should not be a for-profit industry and that it should be a right for all people. And that's stopping action being done. All of that is due to corporate money that's inside the political system. They have bought off these politicians. And because of that, no serious action is going to be done until we get money out of politics. He kept hammering home campaign finance reform and I think that really showed the average voter that Bernie is different from the vast majority of these Democrats and the huge majority of politicians in general. It shows them that he's a real progressive. He's a man of the people and he understands the root cause of all these problems. Uh, so I love that he kept linking all these issues back to money and politics. And then I noticed when the conversation swifted, uh, shifted to, uh, to criminal justice reform, Bernie Sanders simply outshined Hillary Clinton. He offered substance. He offered tough, common sense reform that would actually crack down on abusive policing and crack down on a criminal justice system that discriminates against people of color. He actually offered policy. All Hillary Clinton could offer was boo-hoo rhetoric, okay? 
he educated these people on criminal justice reform. So he definitely dominated that area of debate as well. So for most of that first hour of debate, I mean, Bernie Sanders obliterated the competition. And it was such a dominant performance for that stretch of the debate that I thought overall, I had to call it a Bernie Sanders win, regardless of what happened after that. Um, so now I'm about to focus on Hillary Clinton's performance during this debate. So I thought for that first half, she was getting the sore ripped out of her uh, by, by Bernie Sanders. It was utter domination by Bernie Sanders on economic issues. And she was simply getting owned. It was that bad. It was terrible. She had no answer for serious progressive reforms other than simply to talk about Obama and then maybe shift to the Republicans. And she kept trying to frame herself as if she's going to be President Obama's third term. But the problem is that voters now, we are not looking for more of the same. They are looking for real progressive change. And that is not the case that she made during the debate. Uh, there were a couple of issues where I thought she got the better of Bernie Sanders, though. Um, the issue right towards the beginning of the debate. And it was the issue of guns. Uh, this had been a Bernie Sanders weak spot uh, in each of the debates, and it was no different this time around. Um, well, I thought he definitely defended some of his votes on guns relatively well. Um, the vote against the Brady bill he defended, and the gun manufacturer lawsuit protection he defended that okay. Uh, but Hillary Clinton kept hitting him hard on other questionable votes as well, uh, allowing guns on Amtrak inside that national parks. Uh, he voted against the Charleston loophole. She said light on a few other holes in his record on guns, and I can guarantee this will not be the last you hear about these votes from Hillary Clinton. So some of those votes, they're definitely coming back to haunt Bernie Sanders. Um, he's got to figure out a way to come out looking like the sensible one on this issue. I think he should try to just be honest about the motives in some of these questionable votes. He comes from a state with no gun control, Vermont. It's one of the most rural states in the country. And no gun control actually works for their state. as the lowest murder rate in the entire nation. If he doesn't defend the rights of law-abiding gun owners and law-abiding gun sellers, he's not adequately representing his state, right? And that's a perfectly reasonable position to have. Uh, the vast majority of gun owners, they do follow the law. They don't commit mass shootings. They don't use their guns to commit violent crime. Uh, they bought their gun legally. And there's no reason that their rights should be taken away. They should not be infringed upon. Again, that's a perfectly reasonable position to have. And I think the real reason that he made some of these questionable votes, I mean, that's where the majority of people are. They want common sense gun safety legislation, but they want the rights of law-abiding gun owners to be respected. And that's where Bernie Sanders is. Yes, we need to enact instant background checks, of course. Yes, we need to co close the gun show loophole. Military-grade weapons should not be in the hands of ordinary people. It belongs inside the military for war, right? That's common sense. But don't step on the rights of law-abiding gun owners because that's simply not fair to them. So I think if Bernie Sanders appeals to that middle ground, whatever questionable vote he had in the past, its logic finally makes sense. But in that area of the debate, Hillary Clinton kept hitting him hard on his record and some of those votes, he didn't give a good enough defense and he needs to figure out how to do that in the future. But appealing to the middle ground, I think would definitely work for Bernie Sanders on that issue. Um, so that's just my opinion. And then on foreign policy, I think Bernie Sanders, now maybe he just got worn out <laughs> towards the end of all that passionate yelling he was doing in the first hour. Uh, but I don't know, but during that foreign policy section, he definitely held his ground, I'll give him that. And he always has had the correct and common sense position on foreign policy. No, you shouldn't get sucked into another unilateral counterproductive military intervention. But he needs to go into further detail when he's talking about foreign policy. Because from the perspective of the average voter, this is why they like Hillary Clinton. Like, this is like, like the go-to reason Hillary Clinton supporters give. She has experience and you know she's always prepared for that area of debate uh, where she can go into clear detail and express her position on foreign policy. Whether that position is right, I don't think so. I disagree with lots of it. Uh, either way, people come away with the impression that she is the most experienced, that she is the most prepared to be commander in chief. And on foreign policy, Bernie Sanders has got to push back against that sentiment. Go into detail, come more prepared for foreign policy. You have the right position on that issue. It should definitely be Muslim countries leading the way because it is a fight for the soul of Islam. But beef it up with some facts, some statistics, and tell people just how we're going to get Muslim countries to the table. But Hillary Clinton came away from that foreign policy section 
looking like she's the most experienced and she's the most prepared to protect this country. And in my eyes, I think that's wrong. I think she's too hawkish. I think she would suck this country into pointless intervention. But because a lot of voters, they're not looking below the surface, Bernie Sanders has got to combat that by looking more experienced and coming prepared for foreign, for, for foreign policy. Again, he's got the right position, but he's just got to beef it up a little bit more. Um, but besides guns and foreign policy, Bernie Sanders destroyed Hillary Clinton. And if people are looking for real change and are sick of the same old, Bernie Sanders came away as the obvious choice. Uh, Hillary Clinton, she looked policy on foreign policy and on guns, some of her attacks did land on Bernie Sanders. But on economic issues, she got throttled. Anybody who watched that debate came away with the impression that Bernie Sanders is a real progressive fighter, okay? And Hillary Clinton would simply be the third term of Barack Obama. And what Bernie Sanders proved is during that debate is that he isn't just some far-fetched dreamer who has a vision but no actual plan for action. No, no, no. He showed all these progressive reforms. They actually can get done. But, and he kept reiterating this, it's going to take the might of the people, the might of the political revolution to get over the hump. Bernie absolutely dominated in this debate. Hillary looked to be simply more of the same. And my silence on Martin O'Malley, it speaks volumes about what I think. Uh, he was so irrelevant. Oh, it seemed like half of what he said was a request for more time. I mean, I honestly feel bad for the guy because he has the message. He has the right ideas. I think he would be a very good president in my eyes. This just isn't his time. I wouldn't be mad at all if he was uh, Bernie Sanders' VP though, on the ticket. But the momentum that Bernie Sanders is going to get from this debate, it might just carry him to a win in Iowa and New Hampshire because overall, he dominated this debate and he came away looking like the only real progressive on that stage. And that will certainly give him momentum as his primaries begin. Millions of people were watching. Uh, and even as hard as the DNC tried, the ratings came out. 10 million people were watching this debate. So 10 million people saw Bernie Sanders give Hillary Clinton a butt whooping on economic issues. He is the real progressive eye in my eyes. And I think it clearly showed in this debate. Uh, tell me what you guys think on this debate in the comment section below. Peace out and hashtag feel the burn.